It is in times like crisis, in volatile market times, when people often take a look at their relationship with their financial advisor to see whether or not they're with the right one. Many times, it's not about performance, it's more about communications. In this video, I want to share with, you, share with you seven of the most common mistakes people make when they go about hiring a financial advisor. Hi, my name is Mark Singer. And for timely and up-to-date information on the retirement during this crisis, on income, social security, and the like, click on the link below to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to be alerted to when we post new videos. So mistake number one is not hiring a financial advisor who is not a fiduciary. Now, fiduciary is one of those words, I and mean, we typically in the financial institution, in the financial industry, throw around these words. A lot of people don't know what the heck we're talking about. Sometimes we don't even know. But a fiduciary, boiled down to its simplest ways, is putting the client's needs first and making sure that the client is at the center of the relationship and all of it is driven for his or her benefit, not for the benefit of the advisor. And that the recommendations must be in alignment with what the client's goals and objectives are, not what the advisor or their management's goals are. So those who are pushing product, so Leanne, when you all you do is get phone calls about product, you may want to question whether or not you're with the right relationship and whether or not that advisor really is in a fiduciary capacity and is taking after you first. Mistake number two is choosing an advisor with the wrong specialty. You know, sometimes you may just think of financial advisors as just being a financial advisor. I mean, what's the difference between financial advisor A, B, or C. It's, it's not very different than if you went and you had a problem health-wise and you went to go see a doctor. Now, if I had a problem with my foot, I wouldn't go see my heart doctor, right? It's no different here in the world of financial planning. Some are specialists. Some do a little bit of everything. They have knowledge about a fair amount of different topics and can help you in general. That would be my primary care physician, right? But when I really need someone to help me and go deep into a topic, I want the specialist. So when you're talking about, you wanna do some planning for college, make sure that person is a college specialist. If you wanna have somebody help you with cash flow needs or debt, Make sure they're just dealing with cash flow and debt. And then the world I live in, which is retirement, we specialize in just working with those who are transitioning into retirement. Our clients are not 22 years old or 31 years old where they're looking to manage cash flow or trying to figure out how to accumulate assets. They're not the right fit for us and we're not the right fit for them. So it's important when you're interviewing that financial advisor, you find out what their specialty really is. Now, mistake number three, getting with an advisor who has an incompatible strategy or approach with what you're looking for. Let me phrase that a little bit differently. Many years ago, I, I always remember this, I had a prospective client come into my office. It was at the time where the markets were going straight away like 20, 25 years ago. And I remember that he said to me, you know, what I'm really hoping for, my expectations are, I'd like to get somewhere between an 18 to 20% return on my money in the market. And I'm thinking, you know what? For me, as the financial advisor, it was an incompatible relationship because that wasn't my approach. I'm much more conservative when it comes to the approach to the market and take take more of a planning focus to it. So our clients, you know, we're looking for you know moderate returns, not these aggressive returns. So from his perspective, I was the wrong planner for him. And I, essence, in essence, told him that I said, I'm just not the planner for you. This is not our approach. So if you're very conservative 
and you ask them what kind of approach they take with their money management and they're very aggressive, that's the wrong place for you or vice versa. But it's important to know how they go about and do their business and that it's in alignment with how, what your values and goals are. By the way, I, I am saving the best for last, so do make sure that you stay tuned to the end because I think that may be the most important aspect of interviewing a financial advisor. The next mistake I'm gonna share with you is not asking for their credentials. Now, I happen to be a certified financial planner practitioner. I am a CFP. In our industry, that designation is held at a very high level. If it's important for you to be associated with someone who has those type of credentials, then you need to ask. If you're just looking for a salesperson, then the credentials may not be important to you. But you need to at least ask the question and again, make sure that you're in alignment with, with whatever that is that financial advisor represents. Now, I will tell you that there are a lot of mistakes that people make and in our master class, we share with you four of the biggest, most costly mistakes. So if you're interested in viewing it, click on the link below. So let's return to our lesson and the next mistake. Mistake number five is assuming that a financial advisor is associated with a big brand name, that therefore that financial advisor is better or more capable than those who don't have that big brand name associated with them. In our industry, many years ago, most advisors came from those big names that we all know of. But since then, there are many very qualified, highly competent planning firms that are independent of these big names. Most of them have you know, many of the capabilities from a research perspective, a technology perspective, a planning perspective, as those of those names who have spent millions of dollars advertising to you so you'd feel comfortable about them. But make sure that when you talk to that advisor, you're working with the advisor, not the brand name. So make sure your advisor has that capability you're looking for, whether they work for the big brand name, or are an independent firm. Now, mistake number six is not understanding how they get paid. And now I'm not here to advocate one way or the other. I'm just here to tell you the differences, okay? And you'll have to make your own decision. So there is the, the commission only approach where when they sell you a product, they get paid. That's certainly one way, and our industry is certainly moving away from that. That used to be the model years ago, but we've, we're transitioning more and more away from that. But that doesn't mean that that's right or wrong. That's a decision that you have to make. Then there is the fee model, where they charge a fee for the amount of assets they are managing for you. Let's call it a 1% number, just as a number. So if you have a million dollars, it'll cost you 1% of the million dollars for that firm or individual to guide you and help you through managing that portfolio. Again, not saying one is right or wrong. Then there's another aspect, which is the planning fee. And for some firms like ours, we do charge a fee to do planning. And the fee can range anywhere from uh, Fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars to some firms may charge, you know, ten or twenty or thirty thousand dollars to do the planning, and the planning is really key because the planning really does direct you to how the investment should be done. At least that's my approach and how I like to do things. But that may not be what you want. You may just want somebody to manage the money. If it's managing the money, you need to determine whether or not they get paid a commission or it's fee-based. And for fee-based, typically, as they make more money, you make more money. If you make less money, they make less money. So you're really on the same side of the table. But again, it's important to just, as you go in there, recognize where they fit in. Is it a combination of these? Is it a hybrid? Is it just one or the other? Understand that and you have a better sense of what to expect. 
the final mistake, and I truly think this is the biggest one that people make, the biggest blunder that occurs when hiring a financial advisor is not understanding what their role is. What do I mean by that? So in a, another video, we talked about how a particular widow lost a lot of money because she did not understand that her husband who had just passed and was working with fidelity, she didn't understand that it was the husband who was being the proactive one. It was the husband who was making the calls. It was the husband who was making the decisions about the investments, not fidelity. Fidelity wasn't proactively calling them to and every one of their millions of clients to determine what the best portfolio was when markets were going up or down or stocks were going up or down. And she didn't understand this role. And as a result, she didn't know that one, the stock was coming all the way down and that she lost over a million dollars. And that two, that she was expecting the phone call. So when you go in and interview the financial advisor, particularly in times like the, the pandemic that we're in, where we believe particularly we, we must increase the amount of proactive communications we have with our clients, not only to make sure that they're fine financially, but they're fine emotionally and everything else wise. But is the financial advisor that you're with communicating with you, with you more when times are bad, or are they just reveling with you when times are good? Because it's when times are bad that the really good financial planners, their stock, no pun intended, really rises because they really do reach out and make sure that you're all set. So again, this final mistake, understanding what the role is and what you can expect from your advisor may be the most important question to ask of the seven. Again, if you're interested in understanding more about the whole planning and, and the, the mistakes to avoid that could cost you thousands of dollars, click on the link below to view our masterclass. If you did enjoy this video, thank you for watching. Tell a friend, click on the button below to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you very much. And I, I truly do hope that you enjoy the retirement journey.